am Joy and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be working on our frosting on top gourd and this is so much fun. It's something so different than we've been doing in the past and I think you're just going to be thrilled with it. So come on, let's have fun and get started. We're going to start out with our supply list so you know what you need and can collect to do the project. Um, one of the first things that I always start with is my tray that I work on. Whether using paint or dyes or um, the texture that we're going to use, it all stays confined and you don't make a mess over everything else. So that's real important to me. And that was actually a boot tray that you can find sometimes at the dollar stores but any tray is good um, sometimes you can find them at the thrift stores we're going to start with uh, gesso which will be our base and that is a sealer and when you're working with white that really helps I'll just go through them and we'll get into a little bit more detail as we're going I'm going to use a pink parfait a um, folk art this is a multi-surface wicker white. This is a thicker paint. I'm also going to be using pigment powders when we get to our clay and I've got a green that I like, a pink, a darker kind of rose color, a pearl white, and then a gold to kind of highlight with. Um, we're going to be using uh, I use Wilton, you can use whatever, but a disposable um, cake decorating frosting bag as well as the hardware for it. And we're going to be using a number 16 tip. We used to call this like a shell tip and you could play around with it. You might find that you have one that you like better. That's totally up to you. We're going to be using fast dry acrylic latex caulk silicone. This is white. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. As well as my base coating brushes. And a lot of times when I'm base coating, I'll start with my old yucky ones. So if I get paint up in the ferrule, it doesn't matter. As well as some of the ones that I want to use for my uh, pigment powder to apply those and you can use older brushes for that they don't have to be newer ones but I wanted some different sizes for that the clay that we're using for the rose I'm going to actually use the quick wood on so we need our quick wood we have the molds I have a rose and a rose petal and we'll talk about those a little bit later we're going to use ultra fine Prisma glitter and that's just super ultra fine just a little bit of that and I also might try a little bit of uh, tinsel glitter and this is white on both of those I'm going to be using my texture brush to add some lines and some texture to the gourd my scissors and then my uh, two inch tape um, to uh, work with the clay and you'll see how that works. A pencil, I've got some wet um, wet ones, baby wipes, whatever you want to call those just to clean your hands with as we're working. We're going to need a plastic shopping bag and a heavy duty rubber band and you'll understand that a little bit later. Some paper towels some plastic wrap or if you want saran wrap that's fine too you also want to have a cock gun that we're going to use and we also need a um, vegetable cooking spray uh, your gourd whatever kind of gourd you want to use for this one I'm using a bottle gourd and then I'm going to also be using a stabilizer you don't have to have one but this helps keep your gourd in place and we might see, if you can pan in a little bit here, our drying tray. I've got a little bit of water as well. And that is our basic supplies. We may throw a couple things in there as we're working in case we forgot anything. But that is the majority of it. So let's get started. I used a bottle gourd and I cut the top off and cleaned it out as well as I could on the inside 
And you could use, like I said, whatever type of gourd you wanted to. If you were doing a round one, you may want to bring it up from the bottom up because this is top heavy, but you wouldn't want to do where it sits on the gourd. So if you were doing a bowl or something, you might want to think about that as well. I had this gourd already sprayed black, so I tried to spray a little bit of white in it. You could do the inside any color you want to. I think I'm going to do mine with an acrylic pink, but just from this bottleneck up here so it matches my roses. So before we start painting this, we're going to measure how many roses we need to make. And I go to kind of the fattest part of my gourd, and I'm going to take my rose, and I'm going to lay it. And if you want to mark each time, you can. This is just kind of a guesstimation. It's not rocket science, and we're going to do some extras anyway, so no big deal. If you're stabilizer doesn't hold it that way turn it up that way and then it'll hold it so I'm just gonna go thing to thing and like I said if you wanted to mark it and it's gonna leave a little bit of room between those roses is what we want so we've got two three four five six seven eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and we're gonna be right around here. So I'm gonna do 14 roses. And for every rose I do, I need two leaves. And this is our rose leaf, and you can decide if you want all of one kind or if you want them all differently if you're doing them all differently you can do f those faster so that's totally up to you or however you want to do it don't you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it but we're going to work on those roses in between our uh, paint drying to you but we're going to start by base coating it with gesso and gesso is a sealer and it will make your other white paint go on easier and not as many coats. If you don't have gesso you can go ahead and do just white paint. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, like I was saying the folk art um, multi-surface paint is a lot thicker and that goes on better so you may like that and that may work just fine by itself when you're working with the paint take out all of your ridges now this is an old rough brush so I'm getting more ridges but if you have a newer brush you shouldn't get the ridges as well we want to paint the whole gourd because the design of the, let's just call it frosting, may come through and you could see the gourd color. So you don't want to leave any of that unpainted. If you wanted to change the frosting to a different color, you could do that. But I would recommend using the food coloring that's concentrated. You don't want to apply anything that's liquid because you're going to change the consistency and use, lose the hardness that we really want of the, um, the frosting. So you can try different things. I always tell you to try things because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here. And it's a nice warm day, so we are drying really fast. You do not want to go back over the paint because you will lift it up unless it is completely dry. And I sanded this just to get the rough spots off. We could have covered these up. I think they're going to get covered up with the frosting, but this little guy, we could have put some quick wood in him and covered him up. And I'm going to go all the way up. Um, and 
we're going to put a second coat on him because he's already dry enough but if you're waiting for him to dry if it's winter time or something like that you can go on to the next step because we'll be working on the flowers and we have to do a bunch of those and those have to dry as well so you always have something that you can be working on I have a couple of base coats of gesso on my white and then I'll switch over to my acrylic. And remember, you use a gesso first so you don't need as many coats of your acrylic. And now I'm using my um, pink parfait. And all of my paints I picked up at Walmart. I try to do them where you can find them easy. And I would suggest a layer of gesso under this first. That's probably what I should have done. And then this would cover better. But I may like a little bit of that black showing through just so it's got a shadow for the middle. And I'm only going up to that part and then it disappears into the bottom. And working with paint it's hard to get it in the bottom and if you water it down you've got to be really careful because you can crack your gourds when it's an inside because it gets into the crevices especially on gourds that are dr dry area gourds like Arizona gourds where it's not as wet the east where it is more humid is not those gourds don't crack as easy that's a lesson I had to learn on my own I could not figure that one out. So we're going to probably put a couple of coats on that in between. And because I can't put my hand back in there to let that dry, we're going to go ahead and set that down on our dry board. And then we'll come back and start working on our roses. We're going to start working on our roses and our leaves and um, we're using quick wood and if you've never used quick wood it is actually um, a wood repair epoxy putty and but I use it like clay but the thing is you have 30 minutes to work with it it's rock hard in an hour which I love I really like that about that now when we're using it today because we're going to put the pigment powder on it we don't want to leave the first one more than about 15 minutes before we put the powder onto it so that's kind of important to remember and you may even want to put up a timer and you can do a few at a time you don't have to do the whole 14 at a time but once you get going this goes really really fast now if you've never worked with quick wood here is your, we can get it out of there. This is always the hard part. This is your instructions and your sheet and your information. So I always recommend that you read that. Quickwood is a two-part epoxy and it's already right here so you don't have to mix equal melts which is really really good and when you're done with it you always want to put this metal piece and put it back in here and it'll stay for a few years they say two years but I know people that said they've had theirs for 10 or 15 years the only thing that may happen is the ends may get a little bit crusty uh, one of the things I want to talk to you about is when you're working with quickwood remove your jewelry Rock hard means rock hard, even in your jewelry. So that's something to remember. And I'm going to be using vegetable spray on my hands. And you can get any vegetable spray you want. If you have some in the house, you can use what that is. Or you can just buy a cheap one at Walmart. We're also going to lightly spray, I'll do this over a tray, just a little bit into our molds. You don't want a whole lot. If you feel you have too much, take your paper towel and wipe it off. Another thing I always do is take it off the outside of it so it doesn't slide and get on other items. We're not going to be putting it directly on, but normally you can put quick wood directly onto the board and it will stay. 
the fresher the quick wood, the better it stays. You also can put a small um, dot of E6000 where you're going to put the quick wood on just to ensure that it stays in place. But we're going to be using our frosting to put them on. So we're not worried about that as much. Another thing that you might want to do with your scissors is put a little bit of that vegetable spray on your scissors before we cut this. Now, cut whatever amount you're comfortable with. I'm going to cut right about there. Now pop that back open stick that back on. There is a plastic on here. Do not take it off the whole roll. But I get so many people saying, what is wrong with the mold they're working on? And I go back and especially smaller pieces and pull the plastic out. So it's real important to get that plastic out of there. So we have to need this. This is really important. If you do not need it, it will not activate it and it will not get hard. Repeat that. If you do not need the quick wood, it will not activate it and it will not get hard. I have people that write me and say their quick wood is not hard. They didn't need it and they didn't, if they did need it, they didn't need it long enough. See this? It is still marbleized. It is not mixed well enough. If you don't want to use a vegetable spray, you can also use water. And I have people that will even use spray bottles of just water to get the quick wood to release. So that's another item you can do. And if the quick wood, this isn't hard, it's just the way it's doing. If it gets kind of crumbly, stick your finger in water and then just do that and that will put enough moisture. Don't add it any other way. You'll end up with too much water into it. Now what I should have done first is cut some tape off and have these already. A bunch of little tapes the size of your mold. So, and I just put them on the size of my table Catch your scissors so you don't lose that, like I just did. And I've got things falling in the studio. Cut several of those, and I just put them on the edge of my table. Try not to put your finger on the middle of the sticky spot, especially since you have vegetable oil on it. If you did this beforehand, it's better. And you'll find out why in just a minute here. Okay, that's a good start. So now we're going to take our quick wood. And our quick wood should also be warm to the touch now. It's going to kind of warm up so you know that it's going to work. So think about how much is going to fit in here. And I'm going to make a ball. You could put some wax paper or a tray under here. Now that's just about the right size for that. So what I'm going to do now, make sure there is no vegetable oil on it, is take my piece of tape and get the rows to stick to the tape. And I'm also going to squeeze that just a little to help that pop out. And isn't that a pretty rose? I like this rose a lot. Now that's still got enough oil in there, we're going to do another one. And you can feel it, just you do not want it above there. And if you do take a card, a business card, a credit card, a hotel key, and scrape that top off of there. It's one of my secret weapons that I use the most. You want a laminated card, not a paper one. And continue to work. Now this guy got a little bit scrunchy on the side. So what I'll do is I'll just pop him in again. No big deal. I'm just going to work on my roses right now because we've got enough of them to be working on and leave my 
leaves for a little bit later here. Now if you were doing a project that you didn't need out right away or multiple roses, you could leave it in the 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 mold and let it dry completely. I'd, I'd already used that so the stick is kind of gone on that guy. This guy is giving me trouble. One of the reasons we may need to stop and put our vegetable spray in them again. So I'm going to go ahead because this rose is deeper. This is a deeper rose deeper and it's got more lines to get him out of. I'm going to go ahead and vegetable him, spray him every time. Let's try that again now. Probably should have got a new piece of tape. There we go. And we want to keep working here. And remember about 15 minutes for the first rows. Now if you had less than this you could put it into the leaves and there would be plenty for the leaves. So that's up to you. Or you could start your next batch and just put that small amount back into the quick wood and put it into that next batch. So I'm going to continue working for 15 minutes before I start <laughs> to put the pigment powder on those. Or if I got those done, I may go back and base coat my gourd. Now that I've got some of my roses drying, I'm going to come back with my multi-surface white. This is dry completely. I wanted to show you a spot that wasn't dry and I started base coating, started picking that paint up. So that's why it's so important to let that completely dry. So I'm going to come back now and see how wonderful that's covering now. So that's really nice. So I probably, this probably will be my last coat of white. But if we have done the just so we're using regular acrylics, you may have done four or five coats minimum. So we're going to go ahead and put this on. And my roses are drying. So I've got a little bit of time. Put this on real quick. And once that's dry, we still got one more. Um, coat to do on our pink as well and when I'm done with this I'm going to set it just like this on my dry board and let that continue to dry now you don't want to do that when the pink is drying because it needs the air remove any goobers that you may have in your paint and I'm also using my nicer brush so I don't get the lines or ridges in here as much so I'm going to finish that up and give my roses 15 minutes and we'll start working on those again. Now my roses have been done for about 15 minutes. They're still on the tape. And if you ever don't want the tape part to, uh, to stick, you can always put baby powder on it and that'll get that part to quit from sticking. But I'm going to use my light pink on the rose and then a dark pink in the middle and then my pearl. Now, a lot of times people don't know where to buy these. Um, these are Most of these are Pearl X. These are in your scrapbook section at your craft store. If you don't have them there, then you can always order them from bluewell.com. Um, I'm putting a mop brush, but like I said, any old brush is fine. This is an oval mop. I think it really doesn't matter we're just picking them up but when you go to pick up the embossing excuse me pigment powder I always call it embossing powder and it's not you have a whole bunch there 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to pounce it off on our lid. You should always do that unless you want a bunch because see how much came off and see how much is still there. And then you can always come back and pick that up. But the reason we did the 15 minutes is if you do that before the 15 minutes, it you can move the clay around a little bit too much and change the shape of the rose and we don't want to do that we want our rose to stay the sh same shape so that's why we get a little bit of dry time and depending on the time of year if you're sitting in front of a fan or a heater you may need less time you may need more but we still want it sticky enough that it takes the pigment powder here and I'm just applying it to all of the rows. And you can do several at a time, however many you kind of got lined up. And it's going to go pretty fast, but don't wait until your 30 minutes are up and it's already starting to get hard. Now, if it would be, there is one thing that you can do to make it kind of sticky again, is to spray it with a little bit of the vegetable oil just ever so lightly maybe a foot away foot and a half away and then it would be a little bit more sticky again but then you've got that oil to contend with so you'd have to play with that a bit to get that kind of right now i can see by turning them different directions i'm missing sides so make sure you get all around the sides because if you don't have it face toward you you might miss it so, and we're using a little bit more than I normally do because we're getting down into the cracks and the crevices of this rose because this rose is really deep. But see the pearl essence color that it's got to it, and that really, really pretty. So we've gone all the way around those. So now I'm going to come in. This is a number two flat brush. Just anything smaller that you can get into the center of the roses. Just the center to make that the dark part because that would be the dark part of the flower because it still hasn't opened up and there's a whole bunch of petals in there. Or if you wanted to do yellow, if you thought it should be yellow, be the center of the flowers and do yellow. So we just did that really quick. And then I'm going to come back in. You can do it with a brush or you could do it with your finger. And I'll pick up another brush here. And I'm going to put some white pearl on. And I'm just going to do it as a highlight, only on one side of the rose. And when you're putting these on, you could pick one side of the pattern that stays and I always use that or it doesn't matter. It, what I mean by that is if you had them lined up when we put them on the gourd, if the right side stayed that way, that would be the sun reflecting, if you wanted to get that technical. And what this just some reflective light. You could put more, you could put less. It doesn't matter. Just to kind of kind of give it more of a dimension and that is how we do our roses so I'm going to continue um, base coating my gourd and do working on roses until I get them all done and then start on my leaves now another thing is this part from here to here is done enough I may go do one more coat here from the halfway mark up to the bottom because that's what shows. But this is going to be between the frosting, so as long as you just see the white, that's okay. I did my 14 plus 2 extra roses, and I got to looking at them, and I was checking the color that I had originally picked out, and it does not match my rose at all. 
And the reason I'm leaving this in is because I want you to know that you can change things and do things. And artists always change things. So don't feel like you're making a mistake if you need to change your colors. It's going to depend on your embossing powder. And then it's going to depend on what your embossing powder looks like once you get it on. So I looked at some different colors. And this was the closest I could find in my light pink. And I really didn't like it. So I found a color that was similar to my middle and I'm going with a darker color and this is a wild berry that's by Apple Barrel and so I painted the inside of my gourd with that and I like that a lot better than the lighter pink I think that's just so much better and then we're going to put our texture on I've got all my white and it's a little bit see-through but we're going to put some more stuff on it so it's not going to matter I'm going to put a little bit of my paint down and then we're going to kind of move it around. You can move it around with a brush, your finger. You don't want to you do move it around with your texture brush because you get too much paint into it. This is a Miriam Joy texture brush. That's the only place you can get it is on our website. And I also use it with wax. But what we're going to do is we're going to lightly kind of go into this paint and we're going to twist it. And I want you to kind of practice. And we're going to do a little bit different on this one I just went straight up and down but this one I want it kind of circles to look more like roses so I did one at the bottom you can see that one there and I'm just going to set it down and twist it try to keep it in the same place this guy I twisted or moved it a little bit instead of keeping his center now you can see you don't want solid so you don't want too much paint that you're picking up on your brush and you can even do a couple at a time and if it gets too light then go back and pick that up and always start at the bottom there's a couple reasons I always start at the bottom uh, first it's just a good thing to build out on but secondly if you don't like it it's on the bottom and we're going to go and do this a little bit more over halfway where we want our roses to end up. And you can see, I'm not going into that. I'm kind of pulling that out. There is not much paint there. That is so important. You don't want a glob of paint. It's another thing when you're pouncing color, sponging color. That's why you get those big things of paint that you don't want just because you're not using a little bit and I'm just going around and around and this is going to brighten it up give it some color and like I said practice a little bit if you need to on your plate or a piece of paper or wax paper that one got a little bit more paint on it so we finished that row I'm gonna do another row up here and then we'll see if we need one more if that's good you'd rather have too much than as far as going up you'd rather have it higher than not high enough and I try to do like every other one but because your gourd is getting bigger you can't necessarily do that and that was a little bit bigger there if you got one that definitely had way too much paint what you could do is bring the white back over now I've got to go up at least one more row This is definitely going to do it here. We're not going to need another one. Okay, so we've got all of those in. This guy's a little bit lower. Maybe I've got one edge that's because of how the gourd sits, probably. And you could even put your 
other stuff on and if you decided you needed to go back and lighten that up you can but see how that almost kind of gives it a rose look too I do use this when I'm making roses even with my wax so we'll see how that looks when we're all done with that and I'm going to turn it upside down on my dry board to dry it that looked pretty All of our roses are done, but I want to stop and talk about a couple of things first. First of all, this is our little rose, and maybe we'll also entitle it Frosted Rose so you know which one we used on the video. This is a little deeper than most roses, so this is a little bit harder than some of them, and this is our rose leaf, and both of those are available at MiriamJoy.com so that you have those there. Um, I did use up a whole tube of Quickwood on my 16 roses. I did a couple of extra like we talked about. And so if you wanted a shallower one, you could do a shallower one. Or if you wanted to space your roses further apart, you could. If you only wanted to use one stick of Quickwood. Now your leaves are not going to take up that much. And you're going to see how much easier those are to do. There were a few things I just wanted to touch on. When you're working with the Quickwood, the funnest thing is always getting it out. Start with a small amount. Don't start with the amount as big as I started with if you're not comfortable with it, especially when you're working with a new mold. Because you do not want this drying up on you until you kind of have a feel for it. Even I, the more roses I did, the more comfortable I got, the easier it got. So just kind of remember that. Now that guy had just a little bit of crusties. Not bad but you want to remove anything that's kind of hard because that may kind of show up in the the rows if it was the, on the top part or if you're doing a shallow mold. So again, remember to knead, knead, knead those. And if you don't want to use the vegetable spray, you can use the water. Just damp your hands just a little bit, not too much because the water is real absorbent into the quick wood and it changes its consistency. And then we want to spray each time we learned on these and also see these side areas. You want to make sure that with your finger you move that around in those side areas and then again remember to take the oil off the top. You don't want anything off on that side edge. Now if you roll the ball and you set it in, you can see that's way too much already. So you want about an amount that would just sit right about there. Now I'm going to push that in. Now that is a little bit too low and you can add more on top. Now if it was a different type of mold and this part was going to be shown, you'd want to pull it out and do it all again. But this part is not going to be shown. Right about where I had that second one is fine. And then again, make sure that you have no oil on top. If you have too much wax, excuse me, wax, clay, it will push out and that is not good. Another thing we talked about, remember, was taking like the business card or credit card and sliding across the top. Now, we put this on and the stickier the tape, the easier that's going to be. And go with whatever part is kind of, it's easier for me to do it the other direction, kind of coming out with. And see how easy that came out? But also you can kind of bend it. This one isn't quite as flexible. These are great molds. They're going to last you a long time. But if you can kind of bend it in the middle, that helps pop that out. So there, those are some of the things to think about in, um, um, as we're working. So, and another thing we told you about was not don't go ahead and do that instantly, color that instantly because we want to hold its shape and that one's got a really, really nice shape. So now that we've got that guy done, 
Now, if you had a small enough piece that it didn't fill any of the leaves, you can put it into your next piece of quick wood and work it in, and that way this one doesn't dry out as fast. So we're going to go ahead and go over to our rose leaves. And I decided that I am going to try these three big leaves. You can do the two, you can do the three, you can do whatever you want. But I thought a variety of leaves would also kind of maybe make the rose appear differently. So, these are not nearly as much as the roses are at all. Now that guy's down just a little bit. And if I put just a little bit on that back part, he'll be a little bit over to pull out. Make sure you don't have it over those edges. You can even push them in your finger just a little bit if you want to. And I have enough for this guy. Now, I'm going to leave him just a little bit too much so you can see what it looks like if you put him on and... And I forgot to wipe the oil off. Now see how easy these guys are going to come off. And see how, how messy that looks. So we don't want that messy. It's really important to keep them just inside that, not above it at all. And I, if you wanted to, you could take your hobby knife and clean them up. But as easy as these guys are to do, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to put it right back in and start again. Now I can do all three of these leaves at the same time. So I'm going to get another piece of quick wood here. And see I took that little piece I had and I just put it in with the last one. Last little bit. Wash your hands if you stop in between to go do anything else. Wash your hands. Keep these molds just for craft only. Do not switch these over once you've used them with quick wood or any of your craft stuff. Keep them for craft. Don't use food in them. So, I'm going to see. This guy's too much right here. He's a little bit too much, so I have that up there, and I'm just going to slide that off with my finger. And he's good. And I'm going to do that for these other two. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can see how little it actually takes for these guys. And one more leaf right here. And we wanted two leaves for every rose. Okay, remove all your oil off the bottom of the leaf and off the bottom of the mold. A lot of times what I'll do if I have wax paper sitting here, I'll fold this up in my wax paper so that the air is not getting on that. But we're kind of using it fast enough today that I don't think it's going to matter. But if you're going slower, then do that. We're going to put our tape on here. And try and do it the direction you can see. This one's easier to, to bend because it's bigger here. I had it coming out the other direction. And there you go. Another thing when you're working on the roses and the leaves especially, you want to make sure these are laying flat because they're going to take that shape. So if you have them up on another one, they're going to be kind of curled up. So it's kind of important not to do that. Now because these are smaller molds, I can take my finger and put the... Um, vegetable oil in and you may be able to get away with every other one because these are not such deep molds and you can see what little amount we're using so I'm gonna go ahead and finish my leaves make sure they've 
waited enough time to kind of uh, start drying before I start to color them. And you can paint these. You do not have to use the um, pigment powder. One of the reasons that I use the pigment powder is these are 3D and I just don't like to paint 3D items. I like the look of the embossing powder. So, uh, excuse me, pigment powder. So I just use that and it saves so much time for me instead of stopping and painting several coats of paint and then continuing on with that. So that's the reason, but if you wanted to paint them, you can paint them. One of the things I would do with Quickwood is to let them dry completely hard if you were gonna paint them and spray some alcohol, rubbing alcohol on it and wipe them really, really good. Let that dry and then paint them and then you'll have more success with the paint um, stain on them. And we're also going to leave them on the tape. We're not going to remove them until we've completely varnished them. We're going to varnish them before we put them on our gourd to keep the pigment powder intact. And that's another thing you could do if you had an area that you kind of missed the rows a little bit, like that guy right there. And I like I said, turn them around because every time I turned them around I saw a different angle that I missed. You could spray lightly, put a little bit more of the pigment powder on them and then add um, uh, spray varnish them again. So you kind of have some different things that you can do with that. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of these done and once these are dry enough, we'll start coloring them. And I think my gourd is about done with the paint. I may do one more color of pink just because I changed that pink color out to a berry color um, on my gourd. And other than that, it should be pretty well ready to go. As you'll notice, most of the time, is done in the preparation before we ever even get to really doing much on the gourd. Once we get there, it's going to go pretty, pretty quick. So, um, and you can see right here, I'm kind of taking these leaves one by one and putting them onto the tape. So don't be afraid to do that if you can't get them all out in one shot as well. When I'm done and I have a tiny little bit left over, I have molds that I have like little flowers or little leaves and I always put that in my last little thing and use that up. So it's kind of a, a little trick. I worked on my leaves three at a time. I made the first three. I used enough quick wood to make the first three. Then I made the second three. And then I went back and the first set was hard enough for me at that time. So I'm going to show you how we color this. This was my third little batch right here. I've got them all done. And if any of these guys weren't clean, just scrape that away from them with your little hobby knife and clean those edges up. And instead of taking your brush and wetting it, you don't want them wet. You don't even want them damp. I just take it in my hand and I rub whatever color was in it out and then I go to the next thing. And it doesn't keep that color. It works really good. So I'm going to use like a light green. or a, This is emerald green, a Christmas kind of green. And we're going to do all of the leaves first. And make sure you get the sides of these really well because they have the um, veins. And sometimes you have to turn them around to make sure you get them all. So we want to make sure that they are really well. Remember we're dipping the brush off into the lid first so we don't get all of that powder over on our project that we're working on and I don't have a darker green or I might have um, tried that instead on the smaller leaf. I ended up doing 
each set for one rose because I thought well it'd be nice on some parts to have two leaves instead of just one so and then I, if I have extra I'll just save them for another one or something else there was also a rose kind of leaf green let's see what this color is this is spring green that is not spring green to me I'm sorry <laughs> spring green is so vibrant and new that seems more of an older green but that would might be a nice rose color green so if you ever look when things are just blooming the green is so bright because it's brand new it's got almost like a little bit of a yellow color to it when it first starts and the more summer comes the darker green it gets and more of a purple or excuse me blue to the green so these were my three that I'm working on these guys are still too squishy to uh, start and you can tell by kind of touching them how dry they are if they wiggle very much you don't want to use them yet because your brush will change the shape of the the leaf so now we're going to add highlights and i'm going to use gold on our leaves here and i'm just kind of moving those around and I'm going to put it just here in there. I'm not going to pick one side or the other. I'm going to, I kind of looked at and saw what is up the highest in these leaves. And those were kind of the areas that were the highest up. But you can do whatever you want. Another thing I've done in the past is just taking it down the middle. And like I said on this one, I'm going to do all kinds of different things with these and not worry about it. Once these are all done and give, make sure that everything's had at least an hour to dry, I'm going to take them out and I'm going to use my gloss varnish because I want the shiny on this especially, the bright shiny and a, a a gloss spray varnish you could use Krylon you could use um, let's see other one that I use I'll think of it in a minute and spray a couple of coats on those really really well you can leave them on the tape during that time and that way you don't lift them up with your fingers and take any of the embossing powder off and then once those are completely dry you can go ahead and remove it at that time the other uh, varnish that i was thinking of is a rust-oleum but you could use satin if you wanted but i think you'd really like the gloss better on this part because in the rest of the gourd i'm going to either use flat or satin so go ahead get all your leaves completely done and like I said I worked on three at a time if you're going slower than that that's okay too just work on a few at a time and just keep on going till you get them all done okay I've got all of my roses and leaves all varnished and on my leaves I did the three for three of these for one flower and that way I can pick and choose and do whatever I want so I'm going to have a few extra on that and that's okay so what I'm going to do is I want this a little bit more toned down and um, I'm going to put a base coat over the top or the coat excuse me of the metallics and it's going to be a white pearl and then I'm going to test and see if I want to do a glitter over that and this is just going to give it that real pearlish shine and it's going to help tone down that pink just a little bit not too much just enough it shows through so and we just don't get it quite as bright and I'm going to make sure that I dry those in between I'm only doing one coat of the pearl and then we will try and see what the um, 
if we want to do the glitter or not. Because I have the glitter on the top, that's why I'm kind of thinking it's going to go through. And I'm only doing it up as far as the roses. We're not doing it any further than that because that's going to mostly be covered up by the frosting. So I'm going to finish that up, set that upside down to dry, and then we'll test the glitter. Okay, that layer is dry, and I'm going to go ahead and put on a white kind of glitter. This one was called Full Card Gems, but I believe nowadays they're called like Extreme Glitter. And you want a white one. This is gold. And you can pick the Extreme Glitter up at Walmart or your craft store if you can't find it there. And I'm going to brush this layer on. And I like the look of that. And it's going to match the glitter that we're going to put on top. So it's going to make it look more frosted, um, kind of cakeish, <laughs> I guess. So I, I do like that look. And then we're going to wait for this to dry. And we are going to start our frosting, the fun part. The hardest part of all of this project is the prep, getting ready to put it all together. That's probably 75% of it, if not more. So don't feel like you've worked and worked and worked and you're not there yet. It's going to go really fast from here on out. Okay, for our frosting, we're going to use white silicone and it's real important to make sure that it is white and not clear um, because we want that white color even if you were going to dye it another color unless you wanted it opaque you need to do the white and I picked this up at Walmart and it's usually with the section where they have more of this you usually can find it like in the spray paint aisle is usually where it's located now the one with this one is this is fast drying acrylic latex so it's supposed to dry or excuse me paint in 20 minutes that doesn't mean it's all the way dry it just means that it's dry enough to put paint on so you really don't want to put your fingers into it now on this one the way we're applying it to the top and we can hold it from the inside like that you can keep working and turn it and everything so we don't have to do it in sections and let it completely dry so we're good but it does because it is fast drying if you bump it a little bit chances are it's not going to really affect it that much but you don't want to apply a lot of pressure on it so look for the Alexis fast dry now the reason I use um, this kind is also for the price I think I paid Paid two dollars and sixty four cents now if you go buy texture paint or texture different places for the art stuff it's really expensive and I wanted to show you a piece I did three years ago because I started playing with it but I wasn't sure how it was going to hold up and this is one I did three years ago and I have traveled with this one banged this one around and it is rock hard and we have uh, I put some opal essence on it that's why it looks like the color it does I put paint over the top of it so I wanted to test it and see over time how this would really stand up on the gourd and I had very good results with it so that's why I'm going to go ahead and proceed with this line of decorated gourds now to prepare it we're going to take a disposable frosting bag and then of course you have your two pieces that hold your tip on and we'll have those already I'm going to cut this a bit don't over cut it we'll probably need to cut it a little bit more let's see put this guy in and we need to cut that a little bit more but if you cut it too much it can be go all the way through and then you won't be able to use that now we're not going to put the tip on yet but we're going to fold this bag all the way down and I use disposable because when you're done with it you can use them again for several times if you want to or you could just throw it away 
Now, the one thing I'm going to tell you is the frosting tips that I use, I do not use for anything else other than crafts. I do not mix them back and forth with edible items. So I uh, know that as well. This is a shell tip. It's a number 21 by Wilton. And that's what we're going to use to make this today. And I'm going to start with my saran wrap and we're going to put our frosting into this so it doesn't make as big of a mess. Now when you start with the new tube, you want to first just load this part into your gun and then tighten it down and then start to push it until it starts to get hard. And we're going to cut the tip. Now the lower you cut the tip, the um, less frosting and the less air that's going to come out of it. So it's up to you where you want to cut it. So this is one I have sealed and used because you can continue to use it and see how it's coming out. And we're just going to put it right in the middle of the saran wrap. Now this one I use, cut it pretty um, far up so I get a lot out and I'm just pushing my gun and it's coming out. In this gourd, we're going to use more frosting than we normally would. Now what I do is when I'm content with where it is, I kind of let it run out a little bit so it's not coming out so much. And this is just a regular grocery sack you get from the grocery store. If you don't have that, you could use a couple of layers of the saran wrap and place that on your tip and put a rubber band about around it nice and tight and this keeps the rest of it good. I have kept this for over six months, probably longer than that, probably closer to a year and it was still fine. If you had anything on the end it might be just a little bit crusty and you could cut it again but I've never even had that issue. So now that we have that in the middle we're going to fold this over and roll that up and then we're going to take this and twist it and this keeps the bag from getting all or the the frosting getting all over your bag it's more confined now the end I'm going to tie in a knot so it stays in there and does not come out if you don't tie it in a knot it could still leak out and we're going to take this part this is why we did not put our tip in yet and we're going to put this into our tip and pull it out through that end. Now get this way down. I've cut this before, but see how that's not up there yet? You want to get it way up there and your bag pulled way up. So you're frosting down and your bag up. So we pull that all the way through. Now there's our frosting. We're going to cut that off with our scissors. And now we're going to put our tip on. When you are not using this, we'll talk about that. We've got storing it in just a little bit but you don't want to keep this out in the air very much at all so if you're not quite ready to use it you can put it into a baggie and then I'll tell, I'll tell you how to store it in between um, uh, parts where we're happy to be waiting on that as well so we'll talk about that a little bit later now this is almost dry and what I need to do is kind of figure out how far we're coming down on it and if you want to mark it with a pencil you can and you want to come down to about the middle of the white stuff or if you decided you only want to come down to there that's fine but remember we've got to have about that much section to put on our roses the frosting must be wet to put on to the roses I am going to use a um, hmm, 
<laughs> stabilizer. This helps keep everything in place. And if it doesn't fit in this side, it usually can fit in this side. And it just helps everything keep running away from you if you need to do that as well. So there's a lot of things that can help hold that and the stabilizers uh, if you get them from Arizona Gords off Bonnie Gibson's site she gets credit to keep the the G um, her other gourd site open so that we try to make sure that we always send you her way when you're trying to buy those I'm going to give us just a few more minutes to dry and then we're going to go ahead and let's just go ahead and talk about this if you were going to say probably more than 10 minutes um, and you were going to store this, what I would do is take this piece off and squirt all this out in the trash can. You never want to put this into the sink. It will clog your sink up. So that's really, really important to do. We also have a, a little brush that we'll maybe call a tip brush or because um, I use this to help clean with the wax liners as well to clean any of the tips. And it's nice and small so you can get in here and clean it out. We can just do that with warm water and soap and then also clean in here. Now with this open, take your saran wrap and put several layers of saran wrap, fold it up and put it over and tie it off with a rubber band like I did this one here. And again, see how this one, I've had this one for a few days now, is going to stay nice and moist in the plastic bag, get all your air out until you use it again, but don't leave the tip in there because that part does dry out. So we're going to let that finish drying and we're going to get started on our frosting. Okay, we're going to think about how we would like to do this. Now, if you wanted to do it and hold it and move it, you could do it, if you were right-handed, you'd want to do it this way. But if we set it up and turn this as we're working on it, you want to go, if you're right, you're probably going to go to the right. So use what method is easiest for you. I find when working with the frosting, it's easier to use both hands just like you kind of would with your cake decorating. You're going to do it exactly like you would on a cake. You're going to push and then pull, push and pull. And you can try to get all that white covered up on that top so that kind of just covers it a little bit. If you don't want that all covered, then move it down lower where it's not going to show. And push and pull. If you work with cords and you don't have a stabilizer yet, you need one. They are money well spent. Now see we don't want that guy quite as much and if you want to practice on a gourd piece first feel that you can. You see I just kind of took that guy but instead of starting it like this if you kind of push it down and then bring it up you're not going to get that tip. So start it down then bring it back up and continue going. See I have that and you could even wipe that off each time too and try to keep them all the same size. Now what I have found out the more I work with it the warmer the frosting kind of gets and the easier it kind of seems to get. So and you might want to think about where you want the front to be and put this in the back if you are worried about ending it where it doesn't show. We should have two more, I think, in here. And get that kind of in there. And if you work with cakes, you probably can do it better than I can. So now I'm going to kind of go on the second row. And I'm going to kind of do in between. And the rows are going to change size, so it's not going to stay that way but kind of in between those guys. 
and I probably will do about three rows before I apply my glitter. I'm going to put glitter on it while it is still damp enough. So if you're spending more time on it, you need to think about that. So I would say no more than 15 minutes at the most, maybe even 10 minutes before you put the glitter on. Now see that little tiny white spot in between? That's why we need to paint the gourd white because you do not want that to show up as a natural color or anything different. It just blends right in. So that's really, really important to do. And we're just going to continue working around. I'm going to do a few rows first and then I'm going to come back and glitter it. Now on this one, this gourd was cut on the top a little bit of a slant, so I've got more room in here, so I'm going to add a little bit of an extra row. Get that tip tucked in there. In here to kind of catch up with the other row. And then when I get to the next row, I'll just continue working that in. So, and now while we've got it kind of wet, I'm going to do my glitter. Remember we talked about this being really fine glitter. If you want to put it on a piece of paper and save your glitter back into the thing, you can. Now this is going to start getting top heavy, so I want you to remember that. Now, if you can do it straight out of the bottle just a little bit, not too much. If you cannot, put it into your fingers and then sprinkle it on with your fingers. I got a little bit wild there. And I wanted to try the tinsel just to see if that will stick. We don't want a lot, just a just a little bit. Yeah, I got a little bit carried away right, right there. And then I don't have any on the top, so I think I'll put it on with my finger. And I'm just putting just a little of the tensile glitter on. Not much. So use that at your own discretion. You might want more, I don't know. That's up to you. That's a personal, personal thing. If you need to take a time out, let your hand rest, remember put it in the Ziploc bag so you're not drying it out because you don't want to leave it much more than what I just left it right now. So I'm going to pick up on the bottom and use those and continue working my way around. As you can see, I brought this all the way around. I kind of evened out my frosting on the sides. Make sure you kind of do that as you're working and I'm adding my glitter and the shells got bigger from the top to the bottom they got easier to use I think it's the warmth of your hand on the frosting so it's in the beginning when you start it may seem a little bit hard just know just keep on going it's going to get a little bit easier as you're working and you may have to turn your glitter your gourd sideways to get the glitter down in here and when you stop to reload, just do it the exact same as we did from the very beginning. The only time I would not suggest loading is make sure when you get to the area where you want to put your flowers on that you have enough to do that whole area that you're not stopping to reload. And that will probably be about three rows of the, the frosting. So I've got that there and like I said just try and make sure it's all the same length and you can see my row covered up nicely where I had to do an extra one and think about spacing them apart so that they um, go into the so they're the same distance as they come out from the neck of the gourd so I'm almost to the point I'm going to go ahead and use this up 
and then start my um, reload my next one. But see how much easier that's going on than the first one. And I like it smaller at the top anyway. That's up to you. But try and keep your shells the same size you know as you're going along if they're going from small to large that's okay but don't do small again if you can help it and I'm just going to go ahead and continue until I have to reload and then we'll talk about reloading it if you put a shell on you do not like see this guy is a lot bigger than I would like him right there he kind of poofed out I'm going to remove him with a q-tip and try to keep the damage minimal. And I'm going to cover that up right there, so I'm not even going to worry about that one. Just go right over the top of him. If you needed to take that off some more, you could do so. But we're going to come right over the top of that, and I've got to stop and reload. I made it all the way around. I love the colors. This really brightens this one up. So, we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to get our saran wrap. Now, this is one of the times if you do this fast enough, you don't need to clean out your tip. Because we're just going to put him on to the other one. So, same way. We're going to load him exactly the same way. Got to get my rubber band off here. I know this looks kind of hokey, but it works. And that's what's important to me. And I don't think I need as much as last time. And that is all I had in that gun because I've been using that for several other projects. So I'm going to go ahead and use that up. And we don't have to worry about putting the rubber band back on him because he's done for. And this really goes a long way. This is one of the few ones that I'm doing right now that does take a lot of the frosting, but you should still be able to do it with one and still have some left over. Now, if you wanted to throw your bag away and start with the new fresh one, just take the tip off. You could. There's no wrong in that. But what I'm going to do is just use the one I have. Pull that right out. I'll stick this up pretty high. The more you have this wrap, the easier it is to get in there. And sometimes I just cut that extra tail out. Stick that in again. Pull that out. Make sure, remember, you're starting to see your frosting. You need to stop and wash. Wet ones are good to have. You don't want any of this on your board. That's real important with your fingerprints. So remember that. We're going to just stick this tip right back on and continue going from there. And I'm going to stop and wash my hands and continue on. We're going to continue frosting until we get about where you want the roses to be. Now the roses can go all the way into the white stuff, but you also could adjust them if you needed to move your frosting up a little bit. Uh, the bottom leaves we're going to put on with our frosting, but not the rose. So it's almost right about there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this row up. And while it's wet, we're going to put those roses on. I'm going to go ahead and just cover my tip up just for a while till I get the roses done, and then I'll clean him out. I covered it up with my saran wrap get all the air out of there. Now another thing I did is I took my gourd and set it down because you want to make sure that it's setting down flat. 
Now this can be top heavy because we've got a lot of weight on the top, so you might want to fill it up with sand or cement or something like that as well. And I wanted to make sure that all of my layers had the glitter on them, that they're all glittered. And then I'm going to put the lid on my glitter so I don't knock it over. And as I would do that. And this guy. All right. So actually we're still going to use our star tip. I forgot about that. In between each of our roses we're still going to go ahead and do a star tip. So and let's see I want those up a little bit higher so exactly where that kind of ended I'm going to go ahead and stick that down and we've got to leave enough room for a star tip so let's, I'm glad we left that on alone I want to just kind of measure it just by doing a star right here which is perfect so we're going to go ahead and work our way around. Now, if you didn't want to move this frosting around, you could stop your frosting up a little bit higher and put your frosting just under your roses a little bit so you don't get that squished out part. Now we're going to put leaves in there as well, so that's not a big deal, but if you are not don't like that, you can do that as well. Like that squished part. And I'm not even worried about getting them all the way squished in, getting them nice and tight in that. However, you may feel. And I'm not measuring these around because if they don't come out right, I'm just going to add a couple flowers to my design. So. And I counted about 14 roses and I made 16 just to be on the safe side and you kind of would want to start your first rows where you'd want the beginning to be. Now this is pretty close so I'm just going to squish that out and not put an, another rose in there. Now see on this one I had too big of a space for these two so I put two close together and just put one on top and again I did that with the frosting so you can work with that however you want to now let's go ahead and put the the stars in now you wanted those to pull out you want too much of a tip on those so push them back in and pull them out. You may have to play with them just a little bit. I do not like that guy at all. Try not to get that on my rows. Get a little bit of a tail. You can wait till they start to dry and then kind of push on that tail a little bit. It works similar, but it can work a little bit different than the frosting. So 
we'll give that a little bit. We'll go ahead and start with our leaves. Now, we talked about putting a big one on the bottom, and I put my leaves in between. Now, that's going to be really pretty. And you can decide if you want to do them in between. So we've got that one there, and we're going to put some frosting on this guy to hold them on. You want enough that it holds them on, but you don't want it so much that it squishes through. And I'm going to put him up into the frosting a little bit. Now on these guys, we can kind of decide if you want to use them or if you do not want to use them. If you want these to go all one direction or if you want to kind of mix it up. And on this one, I think I'm going to kind of mix it up. On my last one, I put them all kind of going one direction. And I think I'm going to put this third leaf in here and there on them just to make them not the same. Now if that comes through you can wipe that off. You may want to do that with your Q-tip. I'll get a Q-tip in a second here. And you can even keep these guys interchange them all. There's no right or wrong. I guess that's the biggest thing is there is no right. No, that's not one of my other guys. <laughs> little one I used with the extra. Just keep your fingers out of the rest of it. As much as possible. Just going to continue working our way around here. This one, I think I'll stick this guy going this way, and my little guy going the other direction. Let's see if we can get him in there. the next one going the other way. You can put this on the board or on on the leaf itself. I'll try him going that way. I know I didn't do it that last time but let's try again. If you get any of the frosting on take it off. It's the frosty nut on up on the rim like I just did. That I really needed covered up there, so we're gonna cover him up. We ended up using almost two things of quick wood just because. The roses were so much bigger on this one. Well, we don't need the frosting on that. Great. If you don't, if you think the school swirls are too bright, come back with your base coat color, the, the white, and swirl those again right on top. And what that'll do is that'll kind of set those down into that, so that you can tone those down if you feel those are too bright. But again, like I said, do what you like. There is no right or wrong. We're 
what you think looks good. Try to keep the frosting off your fingers so you're not getting it on your leaves or your roses when you're placing them. just going to work all the way around to the top. Now this guy had a little bit of white showing there and you may not like that. You may want to remove that. You can do so. Don't remember we wanted to kind of tuck those guys in if we felt they were too far out. almost to the beginning here. Now I would say let this dry a day before you varnish it and you can varnish it with gloss or you may like satin better if you want whatever you we have the gloss on the leaves but the if you do it over the top of them it will tone them down if you use a satin or a matte so whatever you like go ahead and use that there's whatever you're comfortable with this varnish. The reason that we varnished the leaves was so that they held the embossing powder and none of that came off when we were messing with them a little bit more. I'll go ahead and add one to this guy. So we need one right there in between and we need one right here at the bottom. So I used, I counted 14 and I ended up using 13 of my roses. And it's better to have too many than to get to this point and not have them enough because you do not want your frosting dried up. So that's why we do that then. And if you need to clean any of those off, just carefully take those off and use your cute tip to finish that. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to put my points in just a little. But isn't that fun? And that is our frosting on top. With all of our little roses. I love the color of that. That's just really cute. Um, on the next one, I might go back to not putting having the frosting up here so your leaves are kind of sticking and your roses are going into it just a little bit and then adding some frosting on the roses so you don't have quite as much around them but I do like it around them it's just going to be your personal opinion on what you think now see how strong this has gotten I can't even push it with my finger so once this really gets hard and sets up it's really going to um, be really hard and heavy and you won't have to worry about bumping it anymore but that's just a lot of fun and I'm going to go ahead and take my tip out and clean it and save this for my next project well we finished up our frosting on top board wasn't that a lot of fun and now you've kind of learned our special frosting make sure you check out my other classes using our frosting technique this is our um, 
frosted roses and our frosted flowers. I'm also going to be using it for Christmas ornaments and some Christmas gourds as well as some different flowers. Those will be classes soon to come, so make sure you look at those. Check them out. If you ever have any questions, email me at art at miriamjoy.com and for all of our supplies the flowers and the molds you can find them at miriamjoy.com thank you so much for your support god bless